Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. Just wanted to give you a quick run through um, our experiences on these 1KD FTV engines and what sort of things are the biggest contributors to causing cracked pistons. Okay, so we just specialise in 1KD FTV, so we get a lot of people contacting us, um, obviously before and after they've had problems. Now, these days it's a lot less people having problems with cracked pistons and stuff like that, and we believe it's because they're following the information that's out there that you know you just can't have old flogged injectors you've got to avoid contamination avoiding chips and tunes and stuff like that now some people aren't going to like this because you know they want to do chips and tunes and sell these things like catch cans and other products and whatever you know like let's just try and skip this some people aren't going to be happy about it but this is what we hear okay so when someone calls up and says oh you know i'm doing a rebuild you know i've just cracked a piss and i need a set of injectors or whatever it is it's, that's the common one i'm just going to give you the most common experiences we come across then they go oh you know and they go you know what do you reckon would have caused that and you know we ask a few questions and the one that i always can't wait to ask is have you got a chip or a tune or a remap of sorts and at least 90 percent of the time the answer is yes so out of all the people that contact us most of them have the answer yes to a chip or a tune or a remap whatever you want to call it you know okay so that that's probably the biggest contributor now we know it's well documented by toyota that um, old injectors worn injectors injectors that aren't working right cause wrong combustion and this is what cracks pistons so we already know whether it's We've got contaminants written there. That's contaminants as in, you know, people bending fuel pipes out the way to get covers off to check valve clearances. Massive risk, we've talked about it before, massive risk of contamination of the fuel system. We've got old injectors that are just old. They're gonna fail. They've got electronics on top. They're metal wear and tear. You know, you can't stop mechanical wear. The best thing you can do is drive the car, you know, long trips, whatever. Um, lower Ks doesn't mean they're gonna last longer. It's time and we're currently recommending to replace them at about seven years. You might get a bit more of them just because you get lucky doesn't mean it's okay it's like tires um, based on averages we, we see a lot of these injectors and what they do we know it, it's like you ring up saying oh how long am my uh, bfg is going to last on the proto like, tell me how many k's you've done i'll tell you how much you got left it's a similar thing with us and injectors because that's how much experience we've got with it so you know old flogged injectors contamination in the injectors obviously fuel contamination is another one if you get wrong fuel or something going on in your fuel system then that's going to be a contributor um, it always seems to be long heavy loads so it's not usually the vehicles that go on the school runs and the short trips it's usually the ones that are in the outback towing caravans doing the long heavy loads. so these are part of the questions we ask so top contributors you know definitely the chips and the tunes um, definitely usually towing not always but usually towing um, at least well over the 90 I'm just going to say well over 90 percent but it's probably 99 but usually towing or done a lot of towing even if it wasn't towing it's done a lot of towing vehicles that have had a hard life even if they've been looked after well so as i said load heavy loads for long periods of time you know you got the roof loaded up it's a big heavy four-wheel drive wind resistance hit, sitting on speeds to get places um look you, you do it seems to be the case that you might get the odd one i mean there's hundreds of thousands of these in australia then there's probably millions around the world you do get the odd one that you know maybe it seems to be hard to explain we're talking about the odd one we're talking very low percentages here crack pistons we don't out of our fleet out of all the vehicles we sell people injectors servicing guys in the trade we sell injectors without chips and tunes and remaps we don't see crack pistons generally okay so there's a couple of exclusions probably three cars out of thousands where maybe one set the injectors were left in a bit too long maybe one we're not too sure on another one so you know you know three or four maybe five out of thousands right where we're not too sure what happened there so possibly there's a chance that if you push these little four cylinder engine and that's what they are you've got a big heavy four wheel drive already it's a it's a big vehicle remember four cylinder goes in a small car well it's not a small car it's a four wheel drive and then you put your modifications the weight of that the weight of the family and all your gear and then a trailer as well or a caravan still just a four cylinder Look what you're asking from it you know the, we're getting more power out of the engine with a turbo and you want economy as well look it's just not going to add up the engine's not going to go forever they are solid engines i see them at over 400,000 k's running very well and and just like a new one i'll say and um at the end of the day 
possibly they're just not going to push through and not get past that crack, crack piston at some point. It might be 300, 400, 500, 600,000, I don't know. Maybe some are just going to crack anyway, even if you've got in good injectors and no chips or tunes or whatever. But I'm telling you the things you need to do to avoid um, that as much as you can because these are the biggest contributors. We'll go over it again. Chips, tunes, remaps. Okay, they're the big ones. Old flogged injectors, obviously. Wrong injectors, wrong brands, whether they're Chinese copies, remanufactured or, you know, whatever other brands and whatever other types of washers and blow-by. That's another big contributor to engines. That's not injectors. That's the injector seats. And it's causing oil starvation. Separate issue. We're not talking about that. So we're going to exclude that because that doesn't need to happen, okay? We don't need to have blow-by. People need to use the right seats, the right procedures, and change them regularly. And there will be no injector seats leaking. There'll be no blow-by. It's as simple as that. It's just the people that don't know or they're using the wrong parts, the wrong torque settings. And there is companies out there, diesel companies, that have got guides on how to do these injectors and they give you the wrong torque settings for the injector clamps, right? At least more than one. I'm not going to give numbers or names. It doesn't matter. There's more than one diesel or engine rebuilding shop out there that you think are reputable and they're giving the wrong torque specifications for these things, okay? So you've got to use the manufacturer's torque specifications. That's what we use. That's what we share and it works, right? So look guys, I just wanted to explain. They're the things you want to avoid. Uh, it is a four cylinder. You don't want to be using it for three ton towing plus, you know, five or six ton down the road. You know, you get away with it for a while, but you're not going to get away with it forever. If you do that, you know, for months, a year, every year or something, it, the time's going to come. Look, don't get me wrong, when I say that, you could be lucky, right? You could be lucky. It's like saying, you're not going to get 150,000 Ks out of a set of BFG tyres. Well, you might. You might be down to the belts. It might work. You know, if you really drive so softly around every corner, accelerate and brake lightly in a straight line and you're doing laps around Australia, you might, okay? But we're talking general information, so don't pick on the, oh, no, that's right, that's wrong. We're talking general. It's just how it is, okay? Um, look, bit of information for you. hope that's helped. Um, there you go. All right? Next video next time. Have a nice day. See ya.